Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I want to talk again about, Lord, I am desperate. I'm going through a trial, a tribulation. I need your help. And I want to share insight from Mariah Woodworth Etter this time. Now, I know her name is spelled Maria, but she said Mariah. That's how I'm told she pronounced it. This lady went through incredible trials and tribulations. She was a walking awakening, saw an incredible power in her ministry. I have the newspapers documenting it. The power that she saw that was Azusa-like even before Azusa. After Azusa, and we started to see the Pentecostals organizing and losing their fire, she turned up again as a woman carrying great comfort and helped provoke and stir them up again because she carried a fire. And so I pray that this message, Father, in the name of Jesus, would so minister life that no matter what people are going through, that they would gain an endurance today in you, a strengthening of the Holy Spirit, a fire in their bones, open eyes to see, ears to hear, and let such a now word come forth. Holy Spirit, breathe on the word, and let it have a revelation with a punch to really impact us and bear fruit in us according to the will of the Father. Father, I speak life over each person, and I thank you for each one of them. Father, in the name of Jesus, and the church said, Amen. In Jesus' name. Now, in 1 Peter 5, 11, it says, After you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. We got to get a revelation. Sometimes God has taken you through something to bring you into something. That a lot of time we're going through and it's a birthing of a purpose. It's a birthing of a call. It's a birthing of something greater. Many ministries are birthed out of difficult times. Many, maybe it's a book, a song. I don't know. But God is trying to birth something in this season. And the enemy recognizes somehow that God is trying to do and bring forth something and he has launched an all-out attack to stop, hinder, and block. But if you hold fast, because your enemy does not have endurance, this time, let us not lose this baby, but let us this time bring it forth by his mighty hand. Let us see the very purpose of heaven released on the earth. Amen. And Romans 12, 13, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted in prayer. That secret place dwelling. Psalm 91, where we dwell in that secret place and check out because we're talking about this, that relationship, that intimacy in the secret place, that all the promises of Psalm 91 are yours because of that abiding permanent dwelling in the secret place, and because you set your love upon him. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you such as is common to man, and God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you'll be able to endure it. Now, let's just get a hold of some stuff. I'm sharing with you, I said from Rye with Edder, she's talking about the Church of Philadelphia and Laodicea. She's looking at the book of Revelation right now. And she said this regarding the Church of Philadelphia and that Jesus is coming back for such a church. She must be a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, holy and without blemish. Oh, brother, it means much to be a member of this church. During, right now, this is the week of Passover, and of course, we're right before uh, Resurrection Sunday. The Passover lamb, and Jesus came as the Passover lamb, had to be presented and checked to be without spot or wrinkle. Jesus was checked, tested in all ways during this week to be proven to be without spot or wrinkle. We, the church, are going through it, not surprisingly, because we're so close to the Lord's return, where we must be found without spot or wrinkle. So you may be going through it because we are at the hour that we're living in. And God's trying to bring forth a church where we are no longer focused on the world caught with the cares of life, but on His Lordship. 
She said this regarding John who wrote the book of Revelation. When John was quite old, the enemies of Christ tried to kill him. They threw him into a kettle of boiling oil, but the Lord did not let it hurt him. They then were frightened and banished him to a lonely isle called Patmos, and he was left there to die. He had been such a witness for Jesus, and his word that the darkest that it was in his darkest hour of his life. But he was alone with God, filled with the Spirit. And you may be going through something and be in the darkest hour of your life. And maybe you look back and you say, God, I have served you. I've been faithful to you. God is trying to birth something. God's trying to bring forth something bigger than you can imagine. And John, having gone through all that, was able to go through this and discover the comfort of heaven and produce the greatest comfort for the church in every age, up until the Lord returns. John's messages of life bring comfort to all, no matter what you're going through, because he got a revelation that no matter what circumstance or trial he went through, there was life in Christ, that you could put him in the most difficult place. You could put him alone in quarantine. Didn't matter. He was secure in Christ. Mariah said this, he came back, talking about Jesus, to earth to John and gave him great moving pictures of the future of the church, starting from Pentecost. What a light in those dark days. And God wants to have an appointment with you in the secret place, in this difficult season of trial and tribulation, to birth in you, to show you the things that are to come, to give you such a word of encouragement that it always goes beyond you to reach a world around you to fulfill a purpose that God has given you. This is a time of visitation, but it's a time, also a time of divine appointment for you with Him. You can either look at it in terms of the dark hour and tribulation, or see it like John did as a divine appointment with heaven, where God, I'm going after you, and I'll go after you until you meet with me. Jesus came back to John in all his kingly power and glory. And she said this, Can we imagine the joy when John heard the old familiar voice of the Galilean that had quieted the fears so often when the sweet voice said, It is I. Do not be afraid. I have come back to bring you important messages. I want you to write all you hear and send it to the church. Can you imagine when Jesus turns up and says your name? There's a way he says my name when he does, I mean every hair or lack thereof, and my body stands on end. It impacts me, causes me to freeze. And I can't imagine John as he stood there and the one he had loved, the one he had put his head on his breastplate. Jesus, he heard his voice, and God wants an appointment with you where you hear his voice, not the storm, because he is the storm breaker. He is the one who causes the storm to end when you hear his voice. We just need to hear his voice. We need to come to the place in that difficult season, that divine appointment of hearing his voice and the fresh now word he has for us. She said this, he shows us that our greatest trials and battles with the devil and the enemies of Christ in his true church but let him say, Behold, I will make them come and fall at our feet and acknowledge that God loves us and that we are his true witnesses. We get a revelation. Jesus revealed to John the plans of the enemy and how the enemy sought to kill, destroy, and everything else. But it also revealed that Jesus came to have life, to bring us life in that abundant. And the call to endurance, the call to overcome, the call to stand fast, the call to be found in him. The call in this hour to walk holy and righteous and to be separated unto the Lord our God. There's never been a more important time for your divine appointment with heaven. Christ is now on trial for his honor and glory as never before, she said. When so-called great preachers are denying the necessity for the atoning blood and almost everywhere else of much value, but the dead letter, hear him say, I hold the key and I will open for you. No man or power can close the door against us if we keep his word and do not deny his name or be ashamed of his works. And in this hour, there's a separating 
we see a church that is consumed in the religious deeds, but of lack the power of. There are people that no longer push and present the message of the gospel. They talk one way, but they don't have the life because they don't have the intimacy. They don't know him. And so they can only present the letter of the law and they're mean, cruel, vindictive, or they simply preach this inspirational word. And behind the scenes, they're corrupt and everything they produce is corrupt. And it has no life and has no fruit of the spirit. See, I don't want an inspirational word that doesn't have the oozing and presence of the spirit. And you can't fake that because it's either in you and comes forth what's on you because out of our heart, out of this secret place in us, we produce either good fruit or bad fruit based on whether we abide in him and we're found in him and we have good fruit. She went on to say this, he warns us, we will have trouble. We will be persecuted and misrepresented by false prophets who call themselves Jews or Christians and great leaders, but who are of the synagogue of Satan, who lie and do not have the truth. And there's a generation that so want to control, manipulate and hold captive. And maybe you've been held captive by that spirit of religion that stands like, as Jesus said, put themselves in the seat of Moses. And some of think that they have an authority, but they have no life to them. They are rich in opinions but not rich in life. And they will so judge and condemn and seek to hold you. They're always reminding you of your failures, always bringing you back to the unworthy state so that you never press on. They create in you a dependency upon them as if somehow they can make you holy instead of putting in you a dependency upon God and the need for the secret place that you've got to go after the Lord and come to the surrender to him, where he carries final authority. She said this, the Laodicean church is the last and great church of today, including all organizations, incorporated religious institutions, and bodies in the world having a nice form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. They have a religion, but, not, but do not let it affect their mode of life. They talk about some things. They will call you to repentance but they never repent. Somehow the word doesn't carry such a conviction in them. They're not so softened, walking in such a fear of the Lord that, God, I don't want to miss it. They're easily touched and convicted by the Holy Spirit. No. They're harsh and mean, and they have no reason or problem in judging and condemning and criticizing. They're not rich in the fruit of the Spirit. And we've got to step out and stop being like that and become real before the Lord where we repent of all that bad behavior and surrender in the seeker place and become wrecked by the love of God so that we, in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this circumstance, in the midst of this difficulty, God is trying to get our attention to bring us back to Him, to bring us to a place where we're restored in Him and we become like Him and we discover the victories in him. A lot of time, what's opened the door to bring us to this place of trial has been our own stupidity, our own criticism, our own judgmental and harsh ways. And God is trying to chasten and correct us with such great mercy to bring us to a place of holiness because of the hour. Mariah said, there's been a falling away from the doctrine of Christ and the Holy Ghost and apostolic power and wisdom to a cold form, to a teaching of doctrines and traditions of men, where it's all about men. It's all about doctrines of a church that you've got to do this way and that way. We've got to send you. And if you don't do it their way, you're wrong and rebellious. And it's not about the Holy Spirit. It's not about lifting Jesus up anymore. We don't talk about being wrecked by the Holy Spirit and utterly changed and now doing something for God. Many people are stuck. They just want the touch. And they get a touch after touch after touch. But it's not changing them to the place of the going. Because the Holy Spirit, there's always a moving forward. There's always an impact for Jesus. But religion talks a talk, but never does anything. See, the devil is okay with you talking about it. Just don't do it. The Holy Spirit says, go. And Jesus commands us to go. And so when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and wrecked, we go. 
The devil wants through your trial and tribulation to hold you, to captivate you and remind you. And God says, listen, you can get caught up in your trial and tribulation and be discouraged and depressed, or you can get a divine appointment with me and recognize I'm going somewhere. I'm going forth. I'm birthing something on the earth that's bigger than me where Jesus will be lifted up, not my circumstance, not my trial. This is what concerns us. God is calling his people out of her. God is calling the people out of the world, out of these things, to be a people set apart, a people that truly walk this word out and live as witnesses of Jesus. She said the bride must qualify for her high position and God's glorious eternal kingdom. She must successfully pass through many tests and must graduate with the highest of honors of the Holy Ghost. And you can only do that in the secret place where there's a surrender because I can't overcome the trial. The very trial itself proves that I don't have the strength or the ability or the endurance. I need the Holy Spirit. I need His strength in me to enable me to run this race. I need His comfort and I need His wisdom so that I can walk this thing out. See, the Word says that we look at James talking about trials in chapter 1, said God gives us wisdom. And you need wisdom in the trial so that you know which way to go. You know when to be quiet and when to say something. And how many of us have blown such circumstances because of our mouths? Because we've allowed strife to come out of us instead of holding fast and enduring the suffering of Christ in the midst where people persecute us, say things about us, where this religious elite condemn us, judge us. And we've got to turn and say, God, you are my vindicator. Vengeance is yours, and I trust it wholly to you. I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to be heard. I'm trusting you because there's something bigger in me that, God, you want to birth through me and I refuse this time to allow it to be lost and if you've blown it quickly repent get back don't let the enemy through strife steal what God has for you don't let the enemy take your victory hold fast stay in the secret place stay in the place of surrender not my will but your will Lord she went on to say they will be initiated into the deep things of God and know his secrets They will go in and go out no more. Oh, let us be sure that we are faithful and true. Then he will select us to be worthy to be saved from that hour of trial or tribulation that's coming on the whole world as a snare. And we're not called to wrath. And there's an hour coming on the earth, a greater tribulation than we can imagine. And God wants to save you from that. And so this trial we're going through, let us keep our eyes fixed on him. Let us Allow the Holy Spirit to change us, transform us, so that we go deeper with the Lord. We come out of it a stronger believer with a greater consciousness of God's presence and reality of Jesus in our lives. Where out of that desperation, the Word has become a greater authority. And we've demonstrated that we've stood on the Word. Let me finish with this. She said, we are strangers in a strange land. We are princes in disguise. Our royal robes shine, but the world cannot see them. They cannot see the table our fathers prepared for us, spread out in shining brightness and snowy whiteness. The world will not see Jesus, the most anointed preacher of all time, truly walk with the greatest demonstration of the Holy Spirit. No one's ever walked with that. Yet the majority didn't see it. You can be a carrier of the presence, and so many people will not see it. And many people, like Jesus, experience, they come after you, that suffering. They seek to judge and criticize by what authority do this, and who do you think you are? And they're going to try to kill, steal, and destroy. You've got to become secure in the sacred place that you know who you are in Christ. You have built a confidence. Many of you may have backslidden because you've allowed people, circumstances, or your feelings to convince you otherwise of who you are in Christ. Come back by the blood of Jesus. Be washed and let the word once and for all become final authority. Let it speak louder. Let it speak bolder. Let it speak stronger than your circumstances. 
than your opinions, than what anybody else will say. Let that word be the voice that you hear in this divine appointment with God. That in the midst of this trial and this tribulation that you're going through, this time, you may come out and say, this time, I gained a far surpassing victory. And I'm rejoicing in the midst of it. Why? Because I have an appointment with heaven. And if the enemy knew, he would never have done this to me. Because when I come out, I'm pushing forward. I'm going to see the kingdom advanced and the very purpose of heaven birthed. God taking you to a new level. And God's about to do something bigger and greater through you. Would you receive that? I pray that you're blessed. I pray this message is encouraging you, strengthening you, and that you would gain such a hunger for the Word of God and for the Lord like never before. That while you're in something, you would be found in Him. That the reality of Him would be bigger than the world and crisis and need around you. That His Lordship would speak louder. That the Holy Spirit would come and you would discover in Him how to lay hold of His Lordship. And so to cause your circumstance to bow, your symptoms to bow to the Lordship and the Word of Jesus. You grab hold of every precious promise. They are yours and they're yes and amen. And now, as you're in the secret place, you begin to enforce them in your life. You begin to decree them and say yes and amen. You don't go by what you see. You go by what your spirit man sees and what you know in the Word to be true. Because in the secret place, the Holy Spirit bears witness with you. Bears witness of who you are in Christ and your rights and of all those precious promises. And He hovers over them to see them perform that Jesus may be glorified. Mm, I pray you're getting this. I pray you're blessed. I encourage you to check out more in this series. Check out other videos that they may encourage you to live boldly for Jesus. Be strengthened and fulfill your high call in this hour because you're called, anointed, and appointed for such a time as this. I ask you to help us to reach more backsliders. We're seeing so many one, but I want to see more. I want to see more backsliders brought back, and I want to see more believers built up, living strong and boldly for Jesus. And you can help us first by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video. The algorithm at YouTube will help this video be spread out so more people are impacted. And then secondly, I encourage you to join our prayer partnership team. It doesn't cost you anything. Simply go to our website, information below, God's Generals and Revivals, and sign up on our partnership page. As I said, it's free. Now, if God puts it on your heart and you want to share with us financially to help us do great things, and there's so many things we're looking to do, we greatly appreciate it, and may the Lord bless you for that. But I know many of you can't afford, and so freely we receive, freely we give you. I want you to know that we're praying for you. And if you join our prayer partnership team, you're going to have more people praying with you. And I expect you to pray for them and to be praying for us. I also believe that the reward that we get for all the backsliders won and lives that live boldly for Jesus and preach this gospel, you share in that reward. So I thank you. I also want you to know that we're praying for you. Please be praying for us. I thank you for watching and encourage you, as I said, to check out more videos and may they help you get into the secret place and in this hour, know Him. Have your divine appointment with Him and go deeper with Jesus than you've ever been. Thank you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. In the name of Jesus, amen.